We won't keep those that are here too long. But uh, probably 12.45 would be about right. It's not very long. <laughs> I'm just getting even, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. <laughs> fair is fair. Fair is fair. That's right. Fair is fair. <laughs> I don't even know what we are. Okay. Uh, get started. Any prayer requests? I know we've mentioned Diane already. Yeah. <coughs> Lois. She's, Lois is doing well. Lois. Mm -hmm. She's doing the therapy. Not willing to say that. I got a friend of mine. Her name is um, Bonnie. And she's also in a uh, rehab from a ball. Mm -hmm. Worked with it for many, many years. Oh, I have a great report. Oh, good. Oh, I had I have an aneurysm in my stomach and found it six months ago. And they told me to wait six months and come back. And so I went back yesterday for an ultrasound. And everything is fine. On any change whatsoever. And it, my carotids, where I had that done, that's absolutely fine. And aside from the fact that my knee wants to go in one direction, I'm going to go in another. I'm going to okay. <laughs> Mary, my dad had one, and, and they did, he just kept checking on it, and it never bothered him, and he died with it. And I would not have even known that I had this, except that I asked for an ultrasound. I asked for a CT. CT scan after they had done a, a something, anyway. And they found this when they did the, the CT scan. I would never have known it if we hadn't had that. And I was the one that asked for the CT scan. Mm -hmm. So if you don't want to find out anything about yourself, don't ask for a test. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sure y'all have experienced it already, and I'm getting into it. And try to get a doctor's appointment. Yeah. Talking two months, two and a half months down the road. Mm -hmm. Like that, July. Yeah, first of all. Yeah, it's it's crazy, but anyway, I guess they're taking care of everybody in between. I don't know. <laughs> and then I continue to pray that Lucy, uh, she's been through a series of uh, MRIs and some other things. And, uh, it's definitely uh, in her back, in her spine. They're saying the uh, arthritis is yeah, it's pretty unbearable. Yeah, she said it's deteriorated pretty bad, that type of thing. But uh, if you know Lucy, zero complaints there. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I strive to be like that. She's still around her. Yeah, she gets around pretty good. That's what's kind of baffled about it. But now it's something to do with her, like, system. It's, you know, as far as her. So, you know, I don't know if that's the, could be the medication. You know, who knows? Several things. So. And then, uh, I guess, Nancy, um, ever so often I like to do the, you know, just let people know, hey, plug in prayers. Something I've always kind of mm -hmm. done for a long time, uh, just for people to call and pray. But uh, Nancy Fetty's... Uh, friend is having, uh, oddly enough, abdominal uh, surgery, uh, her best friend. She did not give me a name, but it was on uh, Facebook after I put my post. So. Uh, and then continue to pray for uh, Ed Stone. Uh, that's uh, Debbie's friend, good friend. And uh, yeah, it'll be good. A lot of people. Remember, uh, Jonathan and his daughter, Kayla, they left South Carolina after missing their airplane by three minutes uh, last Monday. Oh. And she has not had the baby yet. They're due to go home today. Oh. And so he's, I talked to him yesterday, and he said they may go, he may go ahead and go back to South Carolina and leave Brandy there. But first time I'll get done, this is getting. Getting a little nerve wracking. Sure. They've been walking her and everything, but she's not budging. I said, Well, that's the way with the, the first baby. It comes when it gets when ready. It ready. ready. I don't know. The last one was the worst one for me. He dropped before Christmas, and I didn't have him until the 13th of January. Oh, my. I told him I'd already missed tax deduction. Might as well wait another year. <laughs> Give her a dose of mineral oil. Maybe they'll come right away. Or any others? <coughs> uh, I got this for 
over the years. Uh, Doug, you'd like to open this up? I have a follow over here. Thank you for this day or maybe as much as you brought to us all through this week. The Lord is continuing on to be with us as we go through our lesson this morning. Lord, just be with those all the road traveling, those in the hospitals. Lord, just be with us. Continue to bless us in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. 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 All right. We'll finish up this series today. Uh, it's called getting a grip, and we started with getting the grip on success, getting the grip on anger, getting the grip on our money. Hopefully, we can hang on to it. Getting the grip on the Bible, and today we're going to look at getting the grip on serving. Mm. Now that there was interesting way things play out with my plans, but here we just had it's Easter, and of course Christ came to serve, not to be served, and <coughs> it was kind of interesting how all this comes together. Uh, so we serve an awesome God, but we should know that. Yeah. It shouldn't be anything new. Yeah. So with that, uh, <coughs> you want to turn, I got some scriptures, but when we start with uh, Mark chapter 10. Um, the late Dawson Troutman, founder of the Navigators, was visiting Taiwan on one of his overseas trips. During the visit, he hiked with a Taiwanese pastor back into one of the mountain villages to meet with some of the national Christians. The road and the trails were wet and their shoes became very muddy. Later, someone asked this uh, Taiwanese pastor what he would remember most about Dawson Troutman. Without hesitation, the man replied, he cleaned my shoes. With a, uh, with a spirit of servanthood, Mark Dawson Troutman throughout his Christian life. He died as he lived actually given his life to rescue someone else from drowning. Uh, I don't know if we need to go to that extreme. Hopefully if something like that came up, we wouldn't hesitate. We would jump right in and do what we needed to do. But as again, the scripture tells us, we are to be servants to the Lord. So with that, Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life uh, a ransom for many. And the question, what was Christ's purpose in coming to this world? And of course, Christ proposed, excuse me, Christ's purpose was not to be ministered to, but to minister or to serve. He did so by giving his life as a ransom for many. And again, none of this is going to be new, maybe just a, re, a reminder for us. Uh, the second question, what are some ways in which Jesus served people? Anybody would like to chirp, chop, chop in on that one? What, what has Christ done for us? Everything. Yeah. Blessed us in ways that we cannot even begin to imagine or thank him for. Yeah. He does it every single day of our life. If you get up and put your feet on the floor. Right there, you start right there. If you wake up, there you, you go. Put your feet on the floor. You've been blessed. That's the first one. That's the first one. <laughs> That's one. For sure. But we know he, he healed the sick, raised the dead, uh, the, the wounded, the mute could speak. Uh, there's just so many things as we read the miracles that he performed. And again, he came as a servant to us. Um, and we need to take that love and serve others around us. George, you came, not that he had to. No. But because he was following his father's way. He was doing what his father wanted done, and, and that's how he chose to do it. And that's why, that's why he came in the land. Yeah. So this God showed us for him to do that. Well, you think about the disciples. I thought. You think about the disciples exactly what you were just saying. Uh, I mean, 
follow me, be fishermen of men. Mm -hmm. And then, so he was able to not man. I mean, think about it. He gave him his time. Of course, I mean, obviously, like y'all said, his life, the, sac the the true sacrificial, the blood of the you know on the cross. But all the examples, all the I mean, to to get out of their comfort zones. To oh, there's oh, I love it. Leave just home, like, leave your yeah, just leave, leave, yeah. get up and laugh. Have the have the. I mean, because say what you want. There yeah. there's some fear in that. Yeah, there's some fear of like. How many I can would say all I want. Yeah, walk by, hey man, walk by faith. But then when it's up to me and some, the bills are stacking high, some things are happening. I'm like, all right, Lord, I'm still doing. You're leaving home and don't know where you're going, what's going to happen to you. You'll never be back. Think, think of mission, missionaries. <clears throat> they, they, they grew up here, and at some point in time, God calls them to go over there. Right. They leave everything and everybody they've ever known. Yeah. They establish a new home over there, wherever over there is. Yeah. They stay there for 20, 30 years, or however long. Mm -hmm. They come back to another strange place because home ain't there no more. Yeah. Right. Everybody yeah. and everything is different. That's crazy. I mean, and they're willing it, to take their children. <clears throat> Missionaries go with, with small families. They take their children. And we're getting out of the way. All it was Christ done for. That's what it's all about. Uh, in Philippians chapter 2, uh, 5 through 8, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Mm -hmm. So as we look at that, first question, uh, whose example are we to follow? I hope it's... That's nothing new to us. <laughs> Jesus' example we need to follow. And if we looked at his life, what he did, uh, we should set our life as he did, follow what he did. And uh, none of these athletes and you know famous people or whatever, but to follow Christ. And we know we'll be on the right track doing the right thing. Uh, the second question was, what position did Jesus take? Um, he took the position of a servant. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and again, that's, that's where, as a Christian, that's where we need to be. We shouldn't come to church and expect to sit there and be served, but whatever needs to be done, jump in and be the servant that we can be, the best servant we can be. I love the simplicity of that sometimes and the reminders we need because long time ago, sorry, I was in a, uh, I called my sponsor, I said, man, you're not going to believe this. And this is the, this is why we need that renewing of the mind and spirit sometimes. I was like, you're not going to believe this, man. There are probably over a hundred people there. Not one person said something to me. And he said, who'd you talk to? No. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I Who, who'd you meet? Yep. Who'd you go up and, yeah, hey, I'm Scott. You know what I mean? <laughs> so when, when I hear that, the servant thing, it's true. Yeah. Don't wait around. We, we know the instructions. We got the man. That's right. You know. And I sincerely, sincerely hope that we continue in this church, and I think we do, to greet people. Yes. If you don't know them, walk up to them and tell yes. them who you are. Oh, right. man. To them. Make, them them. Make them know that you're glad that they came through our doors that Sunday morning. If yeah. there's one thing that will always, about this church, make me um, yeah. just happy on the inside, mm -hmm. I wish y'all could know the people that I've worked with and the things they had going on and when they came in that door y'all hug them it almost just makes me want to weep because you have no idea some of the struggles some of the things they've been through the abuse everything and then for Tina to come up and be like that and Harry to be telling a funny story or someone talking to it's just it's that is the love of Christ period and just to go up to somebody yeah. and say you know I'm glad to see you here yep. today yeah you know, and I think I a big spiel. Yeah, yeah, oftentimes as a visitor will look surprised when you do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, they're talking to me. They're paying attention to me. And yep. This is, this is what you need to do. To I had a man that was, I guess he's in his 50s, told me the other day, he said, uh, 
No one's ever told me that before. And I said, told you what? You said you were proud of me. I never heard that before. Oh. Growing up, it's all I just never. Oh, and I mean, obviously, you know what I did. <laughs> I told you I'm turning to mush these days, man. I'm like, all right, man. Well, I appreciate you. <laughs> I'm going to go in my truck and cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, when I was going to be talking about being proud, somebody tell me that, uh, people would tell me that my mother would talk about how proud she was of me, but she never told me that she was proud. Oh, we have. We need to tell our children. Yes, we do. I'm wondering, and I was thinking about what Scott was saying too. Is that, I don't know if it was a older thing back then that you just didn't. I, I'm trying to think with my dad. Um, we didn't. Well, we spent time together, but he wasn't sports or any of this. Uh, our, our time together was during scouts. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And uh, we spent yeah. certainly a lot of time there, but. Uh, I'm not sure, and you probably did after I got my eagle, but, um, and the real only reason I really got my eagle was when my dad pushed me to get my eagle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so many get to that 15, 16 year old and you're ready to yeah. date and get out and do things and uh, dad sat on me, so yeah. it was and more him than it was me. Well, and I think we're hard, I, and, oh, sorry, I'll turn it on myself, I can be hard sometimes on my father and, and many of you know we had a rocky past and things like that but just what your father was doing with you sometimes that is the only love they know to share mm -hmm. I'm, I'm working all really day is. I'm providing for my kids yeah. and make, but but to break like what Mary was saying to break that and just get out of your comfort zone yeah uh, I did it the other day with Jamie I was like hey I want to I want to pray can I pray with you and she was like yeah and I just prayed to be like a husband to her that God would honor. Yes, yes. And yes, that's not something I pray for. All I mean, I, sh I do in my own time, but sometimes you've got to break out of that comfort zone. I know. And it's uh, it can be awkward. Even though he's honoring it, it's awkward. George's father was a terrific scoutmaster. We knew him. We grew up with this. He grew up with us. We didn't grow up with him. <laughs> and he grew. Uh, we knew him, and his father was a fantastic scoutmaster. Oh, I love that. He, he was. Well, that same line, Scott, and I didn't, I guess, realize it or, or appreciate it until after he had passed. But he worked for the State Highway Department in the uh, signal division, the lights. And um, it got to the point, I think he worked for them either 31, 32 years, but it got to the point in the last, say, five years, he's got them coming into college and bypassing him, not only money-wise, but uh, rank-wise. Mm -hmm. And so he actually <coughs> spent time at uh, home school himself to electrical engineering class. And he got his degree and was able to keep things going as well. Yeah. And uh, I just really never, like I said, I knew he wasn't a sports, sports person. Too many Westerns going on. But... Uh, he just had other lines. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And so, but usually the weekend we get things done, of course, but then he had studying and papers and all that to do. And I guess, you know, of course, growing up when you're, I left home, I guess, when I was 20, but um, don't realize the price that they really pay at all. Oh, yeah. And it, it's yeah. funny, you leave home and you get to 2021, you realize how smart they really were. Oh, there's no yeah. doubt about that. That's right. Yeah. You, find that they you try to teach them along the way, but they just won't listen. Or how, yeah. Yeah. And, or how, hard, it, how hard it can be. Yeah. Life's yeah. coming down on you, you got responsibilities at work, and then you get home and you're like, hey, can you talk to him? He's like, oh. Yeah. All right, boy. Yeah, come on. <laughs> like, I can't take it. <laughs> so anyway, I've got off some a little bit, but yeah, we uh, we need to sort of we need to let people know how much we appreciate them and the things that are going on. Um, all right. In this next series, is Christians have been set free in Christ. Do I'm sorry, not to do whatever they please, but to serve and. If, you want to try to keep up? Uh, I've got these marked. I'm going to Romans chapter 6. <clears throat> Romans chapter 6, 18 and 19. And, and
and having been set free from sin, you become slaves of the righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Now you might need to go back and read that three or four. Oh times. man, it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, that's where I'm at right now, six, seven, and eight. Yeah. It's deep, it's deep, but beautiful. But the, the question we're looking at is believers have been set free from sin to serve God. I'm sorry, let me I'll jump down. Uh, set free from sin to serve righteousness. Of course, that is God, yeah, amen. Uh, and that's what we'll be looking at in the next question. Um, let's see, First Peter. Uh, I think I got them off here somewhere. No, I don't. Um, First Peter, chapter two. Yeah, chapter two. And so I still put it in my Bible. Yeah, I think it is. I'm not sure. I got it, but I can't find it. Yeah, it is. Got it. 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 God. So we're looking to do serve righteousness and yeah. to serve God. Yeah. And the ESV version says uh, uh, freedom as live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil. Right. Mm. But living as servants of God. I love that. Yeah. And don't use your liberty to lord it over somebody that's not saved. No. Don't don't say, well, I'm you know, I'm better than you. I yeah. I've got it all together. That's not true. I saw uh, the only uh, thing, all the difference is that I'm saved and that one is not, and he can get saved just like me. Exactly. Yeah. There was a person on Facebook and really, man, I, I got a lot of you. He kinda he's he's a friend that uh, I used to uh, cook with, but it said uh, he was uh, making uh well it's, it's mockery. There's no other way to put it. But it said, um, what did it say? Rapture card. Uh, something about because of the eclipse, people were saying it could be the end of the world. He was mocking that, and he said, uh, and the t uh, he he said he had his stamps, and the tenth one is free. Like he, he was making mockery of it. Mm -hmm. And I just I sat, I just said, all right, Lord, this is what they did to you. I can't be exempt from it. I can get into a huge Facebook debate with him, or I can just say, Lord, I'm praying for him. That's right. So I do know he's not a that's bad a person. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not a bad person, but he's that's just, right. his mind is on the ways of the world. I'm saved by grace, and it had nothing to do with us. Yeah. It had nothing to do with us. Of course, you're. And then in Galatians 5, verse 13, uh, for you, brother, have been called to liberty. Only uh, to not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but uh, through love serve one another. And again, the question being, believers have been set free from self to serve, and that's one another. And the Bible tells us we need to pray and serve one another. Um, that's what I was going to say there. I forgot what it was. Oh, I'm coming back. We'll, we'll hit it. And then we'll just keep going. Um, must be getting low. I don't know. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 4, verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus sake. And again, whatever we do, we are to preach God's word, to get God's word out, to share God's word. And uh, we'll be looking at some things here. Um, 
Okay. Yeah. What did, what did Paul call himself in that in, in Second Corinthians? And it was a servant for God's sake. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, we all ought to be servants for God's sake to get His word out, to share His word, to share a testimony, the things that we've been through. You know, so so many people say, "Well, I, I can't talk. I don't know scripture, or this, that, and the other." If you're saved, you should have a testimony. Absolutely. And if you don't know what it is, you might want to check your salvation. And I don't know uh, exactly where it is in Scripture, but it tells us that. Yeah. Uh, have a word for somebody. When they ask you about your faith and what you believe, have a word to tell them. Yeah. Be able to tell them what, you know, why yeah. it's, it's this way. It, it should be a change that you know, know what's going on. That's right. That's for sure. Uh, and then... 2 Corinthians 12, verse 15. And I will verily gladly spend and be spent for your souls, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I am loved. But be that as it may, I did not burden you, nevertheless, being crafty, I taught you by cunning. Um, and Paul saying, how did Paul express his attitude of servanthood? And Paul says that he will gladly be spent for the cause of Jesus, even when it doesn't seem to pay off. Note, he loves more abundantly than is loved less. And I guess one thing you have to read three or four times to understand yeah. there. Uh, I'm not saying it's contradicting it, but sometimes it's just not black and white like in, in most cases, but we, we are to be the servants of the Lord. We're supposed to love and serve as Christ has loved us. And of course, we know He went to the cross uh, for us. It wasn't for Him. He was perfect. And so... Uh, and George, that was already planned ahead of time. Oh yeah. God worked that out and that was His plan. And and in order for all to be saved and not have to continue to yeah. shed animal blood and all this, that, this was a plan that he had already made. <laughs> and when that little baby was laying in that manger, he was in the shadow of a cross. Mm -hmm. Was he not? Amen. Yes, indeed. For sure. Got that right. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we studied Moses in Sunday school and just everything oh, yeah. that we read about. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Just lined right up with. Well, that's why it's so hard for me, and I won't get off too. I won't go down this hole right now. But um, it's so hard for me sometimes because I've, t I've actually talked to, well, <laughs> I'll be nice, educated people that say, you know, I, I believe, and they know uh, the Old Testament, mm -hmm. uh, but they just they don't believe that, and they know some of the new. They claim, and I say claim because they don't believe that. They believe it's, that they were like, I don't believe in the new covenant. And I was you know like, I that's impossible. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, no, you're good. I tell people like get the Old Testament tells you what was wrong, and the New Testament tells you what to do about it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And then as we kind of wrap them up here a little bit, um, <laughs> I, 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 I've been taught that. <laughs> That's not right, man. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to read what I got here, and if y'all want to chop, chime in with that, you can. It's just, how would you describe a good servant? And of course, a good servant is humble, unselfish, willing to work, loving, and it can go on from there. Yeah. Um, we have one sitting right over there that preaches that way. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, without the love of Christ, if we don't understand that, we don't understand anything. I'm sorry. Right. Like Brother David says, if you don't have the faith and the love that Christ went to the cross for, yeah, yes. you might want to go back to do some more reading and studying. Right. Uh, that's what it's all about. And, and yeah. how can we love if we don't understand Christ's love for us. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah. And so no. that's uh, I mean if you think about it, if you get deep with that, it's impossible. Yeah. Someone can't truly love someone. and I don't care if it's their I'm sorry. Outside of the love of Christ, what he offers, what he pours in and what he did on the cross. Yeah. Even even if it's a, a non believer's son or daughter, okay. and I know that's probably deep water for, for some people and 
I won't apologize for it though because I know I didn't until I understood, wait a second, this depth of agape love, I, can, I, this, I can't fathom it without knowing the sacrifice that he, that he paid, what he did at, yeah. at Calvary. Yeah. Then you're going to be like, all right, hold on. Mm -hmm. I, now I know love. Yes. Because that's true. That's love. That's, that's where it is. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you with a couple questions. Do not blur it out. Think about it. <laughs> Meditate on it. I don't want to know about it. <laughs> Keep it between you and the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions later, you check with them. Uh, and they are. Serving is, is every believer's responsibility. And then the second thing we need to think about, work on, would you, would you qualify as a good servant of Jesus Christ? And so I'm hoping these lessons have been, been good. It's been some reminders for us. Uh, I think sometimes we do get just bogged down with things going on that we forget some of these things. Yeah. But um, thank goodness for God's word, it's as true as it was 2,000 years ago or whenever it came out. Mm -hmm. But um, any questions or comments? Good study. Yeah, very good. It nice. has been some real good studies here. Yeah. All right. Several words of prayer. Father, again, we just thank you for your love. Help us to understand your love for us, Father. And then as we have given our life over to you and to serve you, help us to understand what that means, to reach out and to uh, work with others, to meet others' needs, Father. And if, if nothing else, people are looking for the truth, and it's through your word, through a testimony that we can share that. And, uh, just just continue to be with us, watch over us, be with that church, continue to reach out and to grow. Thank you for the souls that have come in the last year or so, and, uh, not only being saved, but joining that church, Father. Just help us to come together, that we can serve you, that your light is here, it's not us, but we want to be available for you to use us each and every day. So, Father, just bless. Use us for your glory, in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.